There's nothing quite like a hot homemade biscuit straight from the oven, slathered with butter and homemade strawberry jam. Today we're going to show you one of our very favorite homemade strawberry jam recipes and we're going to show you how to make it easily and with less sugar. It's strawberry season here in Southern California, and this is our favorite time of year. We grow quite a few strawberries here on our property, and we're super lucky that we have a whole lot of strawberry farms nearby that we can purchase strawberries from. We like to supplement what we grow with the ones that we purchase from the farms nearby so that we can make plenty of strawberry jam to last us a year through. So this year we're going to make a little more than we did last year because we ended up running out sooner than we'd like. So before we get started, I'm going to throw a few spoons in the freezer and I'll tell you what we're going to do with those in a few minutes. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a splash of vinegar to the water in the water bath canner. And what this does is it helps the jars to not turn cloudy or get the deposits from the hard water on the glass while they're processing. Now that we have our berries washed, we're going to sort through and pick out all the firm ripe berries and get rid of any of the berries that are bruised or mushy. And here in our house we have a Labrador dog who loves strawberries so we're going to set a bowl aside and give a few to him when we're done.
So here's the final tally, the good versus the bad. Jassy. So now we're gonna slice off the tops of the strawberries and then we're gonna hole out the centers. And they make fancy tools like this one here that removes the holes or you can also use just a regular drinking straw. And for many years that's all I used until I was gifted this fancy little tool. But you can just go from the bottom, kind of push it through the center and that'll take the, the center out of the strawberry and it'll hole it. So this process is taking longer than I had thought, so I grabbed my favorite helper to come in and help me move along a little bit faster. And you can see here we have two different piles. One is the strawberries that we've cut the tops off and hold, and this other is our discard pile that has the holes and the tops of the strawberries. We make our own compost here and we also raise earthworms, so we're going to use this discard to feed the worms and also go into our compost bin. So this recipe calls for eight cups of whole strawberries. We ended up with 24 cups, which is going to triple the recipe. I'm going to go ahead and start smashing these down and see if we can fit them all in this pot. So we use a potato masher when we're mashing up the strawberries. We like our jam to have a thicker or chunky consistency. Uh, this works really well. If you like your jam thinner, you can use a blender or a stick blender, food processor. Just remember that the thinner the jam, the longer it'll take to set up. This recipe calls for lemon zest and lemon juice. But don't worry, it won't make your jam taste sour, but it will help the jam set up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the lemon zest in with our strawberries. I'm gonna go ahead and slice up all the lemons and squeeze out the lemon juice. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and put the lemon juice in with the strawberries and the zest. So now we're going to go ahead and add the sugar to our strawberries and lemons and lemon zest. I know this looks like a whole lot of sugar, but we are actually tripling our recipe and this amount of sugar is half of what is used in a regular recipe. So we're going to go ahead and add the sugar to the mixture. So now that we have all the ingredients mixed up, we're gonna go ahead and get it on the stove and bring it to a boil. While you're bringing the strawberries to a boil, you're gonna to wanna to continually stir it so that the sugars don't scorch. What we're trying to get is the temperature up to 220 degrees to set the jam. And how I'm gonna measure that is with just a candy thermometer and I'll periodically stick it in there and see where we're at for the temperature. And then if the strawberries start to get foamy while they're coming to a boil, you can always add a pad of butter to the strawberry mixture on the stove and that'll cut the foam. And also, while we're waiting for this to boil, I'm gonna take the jars and I'm gonna put them in the oven just at probably like 100, 150 degrees to keep them warm and be ready for when the jam is boiled.
If you're having trouble getting your jam up to 220 degrees, you can always add a little more sugar and that should help it start to climb again. I always start with just like a quarter of a cup so that you don't over add the sugar. Do you remember the spoons that we put in the freezer when we first began this video? We're gonna go ahead and grab one of those out. We're almost to 220 degrees and I'll show you a neat trick to see if your jam has set up. So we're gonna take the frozen spoon and just ladle out a bit of the jam. And then you wanna kind of dump it and see how it drips off. If it's little drips, it's not quite done. If it's big globs, it's close. And if it slides off in a sheet, then it's done. So we got a little bit more time on our jam. So we're just at about 220, so I'm gonna go ahead and try another spoon one more time. So this is the largest batch of strawberry jam that we've made in this pot and it's taken almost 40 minutes to come up to the 220 degrees and but we're there so we're gonna go ahead and grab the last spoon and give it one more shot and see what it tells us on the spoon test. Oh, I think we're there. Definitely falling off in, in larger droplets, so I think we're gonna go ahead and pull it. We're gonna fill the jars, but we're gonna leave a quarter inch of head space. All right, so now that we have the jam in the jars, we're gonna go ahead and wipe down the jars. We've got some vinegar on a rag that we'll go ahead and, and wipe around the rims. And then we're gonna set the, the lids on and put the bands on. And when we put the bands on, we're just gonna tighten them down just finger tight. So now that we have the jam in the jars and the lid screwed down, we're gonna go ahead and put them in the water bath canner. We have it here on the stove. It has water and the rack inside it and it's ready to go. So I'm gonna take the lid off and set the jars in and then we'll adjust the water. We wanna make sure that the water is about two inches above the jars before we start processing it. So now that the water is boiling in the water bath canner, we're gonna set a timer for 10 minutes and that is how long it takes to process the jam. All right, so now that they've been boiling for 10 minutes, the timer's already gone off and we're gonna go ahead and shut off the heat and let it sit for five more minutes. 
So now that they've sat for five minutes, we're gonna go ahead and open up the canner and remove the jars and set them onto the towels that we have folded on the counter. And you always wanna set the hot jars on the towels. You don't ever wanna set them on to the counter. You could damage your jars or break them, so you always wanna set them on a towel to cool. So it's the next day and our jam is looking great. We're gonna go ahead and wipe down the jars with a wet cloth. We don't wanna put anything in our pantry that's sticky. And we're gonna remove the bands and check the seals. So it looks like all the seals are good and tight and the jars are ready to be put into the pantry. The thing I love about this jam recipe is that it does use less sugar and no pectin. You do have to add a little bit of sugar. We did anyways. We tripled the batch this time. We have never tripled it. We've always doubled it and it took a long time to get it up to 220 degrees. A little over 40 minutes I think it was. Um, and we did end up adding, I think, about a half of a cup more sugar um, to the recipe to get it to that 220 degrees. But all in all, it's much less sugar than what's in a regular jam recipe, and it's super tasty. So we love this recipe. This jam will store really well in a cool, dark pantry for up to a year. We've never tested that out though, because our jam never gets to a year. We eat it up long before then. We really hope you've been enjoying our videos, and if you do, please give us a thumbs up. If you like the content that we've been putting out and you wanna support our channel, the best way that you can do that is by subscribing and hitting the notification bell. We love connecting with you. If you wanna leave us a question or a comment, you can do so below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.